Hi there, and welcome to our English studies class. The aspect of creative writing. The topic today is informal letter, and the class in focus is Chair SS1. Your teacher today is Ikuo Essa. The objectives of this class are to identify features of an informal letter and to write an informal letter correctly. An informal letter is a friendly letter. It is a letter that is written to family members and friends. The tone is polite but unofficial. Examples of such letter is a letter that you write to your mother, your father, your friends, your brothers, your sisters, and other relatives. The tone of this letter, as I said earlier, is not businesslike. It's unofficial, that's what I mean. So this letter gives room to flexibility in your choice of words but it doesn't encourage vulgar or impolite expressions. You are at liberty to make use of contracted forms of words like am, that's I apostrophe M. Don't, that's D-O-N apostrophe T, and so on. You also have the freedom to make use of idiomatic expressions to garnish your expressions in the letter writing. You, if you must use pidgin English, depending on your targeted audience, you must put it in a quotation marks, but that should not be so much in the letter. Also, if you must use any other foreign element, remember that pidgin English is a foreign element. Pidgin is a foreign element in writing an informal letter. So in writing an informal letter, you make use of your standard English. So pidgin English is a foreign element in this context, or in this context rather. So if you have to use that, or any other foreign element, you have to put them in inverted commas. Such foreign elements are, if I want to say something like, I ate a bar yesterday. The a bar there is not an English word. It is a Nigerian word that stands for of a food that is processed from cassava. So I have to put that ever in quotation marks to show that it is a foreign element to English. We have some features of informal letters that are listed here. An informal letter has just one address followed by a date, followed by a salutation, followed that by the main content of the letter, which includes the introduction, the body, and the conclusion of the letter, followed by the complimentary closing. These features are going to be explained thoroughly in the next slide. Here is a sketchy format of an informal letter. By sketchy format, I mean that this is not a full informal letter because if you look at what I have here, the content of the letter is not complete. I just sketched just a line, I just sketched a line there rather. So we'll start with the address of the letter. If you look at the address there, I have 4 Christian Johnson Street, comma, Victoria Highland, comma, Lagos, comma, Nigeria, full stop. In my address there, I have just figure 4 followed by a comma. I don't have N-O beside the 4 at the 
because that is not correct. And every word in the address starts with a capital letter. And at every segment of my address, I have a full, I, I have a comma rather. And at the end of the address, I have a full stop. So that's how you can see. After the street, I have a comma. After the island, I have a comma. After Lagos State, I have a comma, followed by Nigeria. Full stop. If this if this letter is to go outside Nigeria, that's why that's where I have to end my address with Nigeria. But if I'm sending the letter to my friend within the, the country, I can stop my address at Lagos State and that will be fine. Immediately after that, we have the date, 31st May, 2020, full stop. If you look at the way I've written my 31st, my S, my S and T are written on the same line with the 31st, with the three and one, rather. I didn't put them on top of the three and one. And the name of the month that I use, that is May, is written starting with a capital letter because it is a proper noun, just like other names that I have used on the address, followed by a comma and my date, the year, the year is written in full. Remember that you are not permitted to abbreviate anything in your address and in your dates. The next thing here is the salutation of your informal letter. I have Dear Daniel. Dear Daniel is written very close to the left margin of my booklet. And that's how it should be. So immediately after that, I have a comma. The dear and Daniel start with a capital letter each, and that's how it should be. If I have to write this letter to my mother, I should write it as dear mother. The Daniel there is written that way because it is believed that this letter is written to my friend and I usually call my friend by his or her name so I have to put it that way so if I'm writing to my mother or my father I should write something like dear mother dear father if I'm writing to my sister or my uncle as the case may be I should write it as dear sister joy Dear Uncle Johnson, and I should take note of the fact that the dear, the uncle, and the name of the person, Johnson, should all start with a capital letter each because they are seen as a title. The, ti the dear the uncle is seen as a title to the person. And I move to the content of my letter. Here I have, how are you coping with the lockdown? That's the only thing I have around the content side of my letter because this is just a sketchy form of this letter. So that stands for my first paragraph which is the introduction of the letter. The introduction of your informal letter must usually include the greetings and the purpose of the letter. Just immediately after that, I have the body. The body of your letter is usually the other paragraphs in your letter apart from the first paragraph and the last paragraph. So if I have about three points to explain in this letter, I should 
explain those three points in three different paragraphs. And after that, I will go to the conclusion of the letter, which is the last paragraph in the body, in the content of my letter. There, I should greet the recipients of my letter again. That may be by wishing the person well in his or her endeavor or telling him to reply my letter as soon as possible. I should also summarize my letter at that point. Just after that, I have the complimentary closing that is yours sincerely, comma, Johnson. If you look at what I have there, yours Yours is a possessive pronoun, so I don't have to give an apostrophe before or after the S there. Sincerely is written starting with a small letter, and that's how it should be. And after that, I have a comma, which is very important. And I end this with the name of the writer of this letter is usually your first name. So I have yours sincerely, Johnson. And I have a full stop there. So you should always end your letter, that is your informal letter, with your first name or the name that your recipient knows you with. So with this, I believe that you have learned something in this class. So let's have a recap of this. Our class today is the topic of what we have today is informal letter. So we have learned that an informal letter has just one address that is written at the top right hand side of your booklet. It has a date, it has a salutation, it has a content that includes the introduction, the body, and the conclusion. It has a complimentary closing. That's all that I have for you concerning informal letter today. I believe that you have learned something. So, you may need to try your hand on this question. Write a letter to your friend telling him or her at least three things that you have learned during this period of lockdown. Thank you for listening. Till I come your way again, stay safe. I remain your teacher, Equal Essence.